So someone wanted to know if you can get an RAPD if you're in front of the cell in the retina that actually receives the pupil fiber, which is the retinal ganglion cell. And the answer is yes. So here's the afferent pupillary pathway. The signal comes in, hits the retina, retinal ganglion cell, axon of optic nerve, crossing nasal fiber, uncrossed temporal fiber. But before we get to the lateral geniculate body, the pupil fiber for the afferent pupil fiber comes off and is going to the dorsal midbrain, pretectal nuclei connecting to the efferent pathway, which is the Edinger westfall nucleus in cranial nerve number three. And so when you have an RAPD, you have to have a lesion somewhere between the retina, optic nerve, chiasm, optic tract, and the pretectal nuclei before you get to the efferent pathway, efferent pathway, which is the cranial nerve three. And so if you have a lesion in front of the retina, normally it cannot cause an RAPD because things like corneal disease and refractive error and cataract just scatter the light and defocus the light. The whole point of the front of your eye is to refract the beam, not, not block the beam. It doesn't block the beam. And so because the light is just hitting your retina, no RAPD in cataract, cornea, lens, or refractive error. However, if the cataract is diffusing the light enough, then relatively more light will be hitting the retina of the ipsilateral eye. And that means you might get a contralateral RAPD if you have a dense enough cataract. So even though the teaching is you cannot get an RAPD from an ipsilateral cornea, cataract, or refractive lesion, it can cause a contralateral RAPD, the sign, without an actual defect in your pupil pathway on the afferent side. It's just more light relative to the fellow eye because of light scatter.